last season, everything stopped. The men's and women's tournaments have been canceled. Then everything changed. Being black son determined if I live or die. And along the way, college basketball found itself. From protests. No justice! No peace! To podium. You guys gathered today to tell your fellow student athletes that I'm here for you and with you. This is powerful, guys. To practice, the unity of a community emerged. Let's go. One, two, three. Go. Forged forward by the power of this game. The best thing we can do is just come together. And together, we might just change the world. This is their return. A new beginning. Heed the call. United, we ball. We welcome you to ACC Network College Basketball. It's opening night in Raleigh. And from Reynolds Coliseum, the Wolfpack of NC State takes on Charleston Southern in game one of the 2021 season. Both schools just delighted they're even getting the chance to play tonight, given all the cancellations around the country. Dave O'Brien along with Paul Biancardi coming to you from our homes. And Paul coach Kevin Keats has a very intriguing team launching the season tonight. Yeah, this is his best and most talented team in Raleigh. They're deep, they're experienced, have tons of versatility. And they may have the best front court in the ACC. DJ Funderburk is a long athletic difference maker. He's got the talent to score in the paint and at the rim. He shot 60% last year from the floor. And Manny Bates, the ultimate rim protector. I expect a breakout season for Bates. Well, hope's very high for Charleston Southern, part of the Big South Conference. We'll see how they fare tonight against NC State. The tip coming your way next. Well, we talk about hopes being particularly high for Charleston Southern this year in the Big South Conference because they have the Buccaneers, Flanders Fleming, who is the best player in the league. Unfortunately, Paul, he's not going to play tonight because of a recent minor knee scope. And Deontay Buskey, who's their number two player, very good three-point man, averaged about 10 and a half points a game last year. He's their regular point guard. He's also going to be out of the lineup tonight. So right away, they are behind the eight ball against a talented Wolfpack team. Yeah, Fleming really hurts. His game touches so many different categories. Points, rebounds, assists, and steals. It's hard to find guys in college basketball who can put up numbers and impact winning Fleming does so with his leadership and work habits. Well, they do have Ty Jones, a six senior from Mississippi, who can really shoot it. You see 53% last year. He is the all-time Bucks foul shooter at a little over 81%. The biggest problem for the Buccaneers a season ago, when they went 14 and 18, was they turned the ball over way too much. And that's one of your keys tonight that they certainly have to avoid because they can't turn it over 14 15 16 times especially with the men out of the lineup tonight Paul and have any chance at all of hanging in the game against the Wolfpack NC State loves to get points from turnovers that's how they beat opponents for Charleston Southern they have to execute the three T's transition transition defense they got to get back they got to get set the tempo has to be exceptionally slow in this game and they can do that with their offense and their defense look for a matchup zone tonight by Charleston Southern turnovers you want to keep the number low and when you turn the ball over don't make it a live ball turnover for NC State it's all about pushing the pace pressure defense and then utilize the size this is a big team NC State they could be one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the entire country this season D.J. Funderburg at 6'10", the senior from Cleveland, of course. You start there. Manny Bates, one of the premier shot blockers in America at 6'11". Averaged almost three blocks per game a season ago for Kevin Keats. And, you know, a season ago, they were 20 and 12. They were 10 and 10 in the ACC. There was debate in the ACC tournament when it ended because of COVID-19 in March whether they had done enough to get into the NCAA tournament. Some said yes. Some said they, they still had to beat Duke, who is next up on their schedule, in order to play their way into March Madness. Well, the godfather of bracketology, our friend Joe Lenardi, this morning told me 
They're an 11 seed. Even if they lost that game to Duke, he felt that they were in the NCAA tournament. They did enough work. There were teams behind NC State, so they had room for slippage. Well, at last, we are ready for the opening tip here tonight from legendary Reynolds Coliseum here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Great to have you alongside as the Buccaneers win the opening tip to get it underway. They are 0-8 all-time against NC State. Right off the yeah, bat, the you see NC yeah, State. Yeah, the denial defense. Most teams play denial defense to the three-point line. That time, Braxton Beverly all the way out by the hash mark. NC State 20 and 2 at Reynolds since 1999. So even though they'll be playing a huge chunk of games, of course, come conference play at PNC and a foul here with Daniels on the move. They certainly love to play here because they win a ton. So here's Braxton Beverly to check in. The senior got into the starting lineup tonight. Certainly a veteran feel to this lineup for Kevin Keats. You're going to look for NC State to try to get some paint touches or some jumpers. <laughs> they want to utilize the size, but Devin Daniels from the outside. 6'5", junior out of Battle Creek, Michigan, with the first bucket of the season for the Wolfpack. Averaged 13 points last year. And an outstanding shooting guy. When he gets rolling, he can be unstoppable. He certainly was in their upset of Duke over the winter, and this will quickly go the other way. I thought Daniels was their best offensive player down the stretch last season. You call that upset against Duke. He was fabulous. He is NC State's best perimeter defender, and I think he's their best offensive player. Starting lineup, Funderburg, Allen, Beverly, Bates, and Daniels. Here's Daniels high up on the wing. Off the fake, a triple, and that's going to go down. So he's off to a hot start. I love the pump fake to create the space. The redshirt senior transfer from Utah. Charleston Southern, two possessions, two turnovers. That goes right to your heart about the keys to this game because that's what kept them last season from being a better team. And you're going to see Charleston Southern try to execute some more backdoor plays. When NC State overplays, you're going to see Charleston Southern try to make that back cut, get those layups. Barclay Redabaugh in his 16th season at the helm for Charleston Southern. He's never made the NCAA tournament. He feels like this Bucks team can really compete with anybody in the Big South. He says it's their most talented team since 2015 when they won the regular season title. In 16 years on the bench for Charleston Southern, two-time Big South Coach of the Year. He has the Buccaneers in position for a Big South regular season title. NC State out in front very quickly, five to nothing here on opening night. On the drive and kick, here's Battle with a pull-up pop, and he'll knock it down. Nice smooth jump shot by Malik Battle, a sophomore. That was a big time jumper because he had Manny Bates closing out. The rim protector for NC State had 83 blocks last season. Manny at 6'11". He's put on about 15 pounds of muscle. That jump shot will be off the front of the iron by Allen. And a tip and it'll count. And we mentioned it in the open, OB. NC State trying to utilize the size. DJ Funderburk. Doesn't stop moving. He's got a big catch radius. Snatches that ball for the N1. 76% from the free throw line last season. One of the ACC's top returning big men. And a career 58% shooter. You know, the NBA came and took a look. He had that flirtation with the league, Paul, and they let him know that he's got to improve that outside shot. Inside, everything goes down virtually. And he will improve that outside shot because when you look at his free throw, 76%, pretty good for a big. If you can shoot free throws, you can make jump shots. Now going in strong is Florence, the 6'4 freshman who got the start tonight, the kid out of Atlanta. 
who led South Atlanta high to a state title and the Buccaneers very high on his upside. They believe he can really play. When you take a look at the roster for Charleston Southern six guys from the state of Georgia. The staff loves to go in there and recruit that state is each and every season has hidden gems sleepers surprise guys. Seeing one Bates of the free picking throw line up right now is second foul by the way. So Bates has to take a step out Manny Bates. So that's a fast exit for the Wolfpack. Yeah, Manny Bates has gotten better offensively but he has to continue to play this game without committing early fouls. Helms tied up inside. Jericho Helms, another guy who's going to be very, very key for Kevin Keats. When he averaged 10 points a game last year. He can heat up and hit that three ball. He can be very dangerous. Out of Chaminade High School in Missouri, he is the third all time scorer right behind Bradley Beal and Jason Tatum. Good company. Cam Hayes, 6'3 freshman now in the game for the Wolfpack. They're really, really excited about what he can bring. Funderburk, the 6'10 senior. And Cam Hayes, the freshman from a real, you talk about a talent rich area. How about Greensboro, North Carolina? Yeah, he plays, he played for a legendary coach in Freddie Johnson, who really taught him well. So the learning curve for Cam Hayes won't be as great as it is for other freshmen. Greensboro day last year was terrific and he was the reason why. NC State with the 8-3 lead as Hayes checks it in over the top here for Beverly. And mishandled, they will give it right back on a turnover by Helms. What NC State loves about Cam Hayes, his offensive ability. He can run the point or score buckets. He gets where he wants on the floor with the dribble. And he plays with the advanced confidence for a freshman. Travis Anderson, the sophomore, he exploded for 38 points against Gardner Webb in a game last season. But here comes a dunk. And a slam by Hayes. Cam Hayes was highly recruited. Louisville and a bunch of other ACC schools. Kevin Keats and his staff work real hard to keep him home. Weaving inside, tough shot. Wouldn't go for Anderson, but he'll be at the line to shoot. Well, Cam Hayes is known for his offense, but what a clean pick. Straight line push. An exciting player in the open floor. You're going to see NC State this season with Cam Hayes play a little bit faster the way Kevin Keats wants to play. He loves to throw it ahead. He loves to push it fast with the dribble, and he's got his eyes up and his head up, always looking. Anderson with a miss in the first one. Named to the Big South All Freshman team last season. He was a super sub off the bench. He got about nine points a game. He makes one of two. And we'll take a breather. We expect the Buccaneers to play maybe 10 or 11 tonight. NC State, pretty much the same thing. At least that was the case when Fleming and Buskey were going to play. Great hedge on that screen. Daniels with a three, not there this time. And rebounded away. Gets it back. And a rebound by Ty Jones, the senior. Here's Battle from the corner, and he knocks it down. Hot hand early for the Buccaneers. Battle was 47% on his three ball last season. You got to be careful now. You don't want to get into a running match with NC State. You want to run selectively. You want to try to get layups or open threes. Charleston Southern will have the basketball. This one's tightened up as NC State has a three point lead with 15 46 to go here in the first. Well, the Buccaneers of Charleston Southern trying for their second win all time against an ACC opponent. They've knocked off Georgia Tech. It's a conference, a Big South Conference ball that from time to time has had success against premier opponents. 
when you look at Charleston Southern last year, they went into Missouri as a 26-point dog, left with a win. They've had some terrific Power Five conference wins. You look at the top of the Big South, Winthrop again with Pat Kelsey, the favorite. Keep an eye on UNC Asheville. Mike Morell building a winner. Some really, really fine basketball coaches in that conference. You see Shot Radford clock. with a little, oh, excuse me, Dave. You see Radford with a little dip in the standings because they lost Carly Jones to Louisville. He was the player of the year last year in the Big South. Hey, hey, two, two. Two, 15 32 to go here in the first. Here's Knox, the freshman out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The shot clock inside 10. Jones trying to get in close and drops in two. That's a smooth move. Doesn't he make it look easy? Just puts his big body on the defender. Smooth feet, soft touch. Real solid rebounder as well for the Bucks, And they've cut this thing to one. Letting it fly, and that won't drop for Funderburk. And now Charleston Southern with an opportunity to take the lead here in the first half. Jones handing off for Battle, who's been cooking early. Bucks on a 6 0 run. Jones cross court, nearly thrown away. Shot clock down to six and turned over. On a run, NC State. We're trying to get inside and a blocking foul. Shaquille Moore, he is a catalyst for this team. Loves to defend, loves to push the ball. A little shot fake drive. He can get into the lane real quick. Lefty played his high school ball at Moravian Prep here in North Carolina. He is the defensive point guard. Cam Hayes is the offensive point guard. It's like having two quarterbacks on a football team. Well, they're calling him. The coaches are a freakish athlete. They think he's the best athlete on this team right now. And a very, very aggressive defender. The coaching staff was talking this week about what will the referees let him do because he's such an aggressive defender and how far will they let him go because he can cover anybody. Tonight's officials are Jamie Lucky, Les Jones, and Jeremy Mosier. Thing about Moore, he may be small in size, but under that number two, he has a big heart. Sebron, a nice follow there. Another freshman, a 6'7 kid out of Greensboro. Johnson Sun, six turnovers in under six minutes. When Charleston Southern made their little comeback, they were getting shot attempts like that. From Travis Anderson as he buries a triple. So he has tied the game at 12. So, Charleston you know, despite Southern. two huge losses here, Paul, I mean, in Fleming and Buskey, they're able to hang in in the early stages of the game as Daniels loses the handle. We talked about the three T's. Defensive transition, pretty good. Turnovers, not so good right now. But they're doing a terrific job with the pace. See, they run their offense, trying to get handoffs, back cuts, slips. They keep NC State on defense. That plays into the tempo. And a whistle with 13-14 to go. And another foul here. Take a look. Yeah, shot clock's winding down. It's at six. Jericho Helms just puts his body into the offensive player. The bump at the end, little kick out Kobe style, creates the foul. So if the you kick out too much offensively, you're going to yeah. get that foul called against you. Five team fouls. This one in the act of shooting a three to put Anderson to the line. And they have taken their first lead of this contest as he pours in another one. 
You see the game plan by Charleston Southern. It's to spread out NC State, take their bigs away from the basket. Dribble handoffs, back cuts, use that shot clock, see if NC State will make a mistake and then capitalize. They just did on that possession. Anderson smooth at the line. Ellums will hit the bench, Funderburg back on. And a 15-12 lead here for the Bucks. Daniels trying to take the baseline and sealed off. Devin Daniels, the junior. This is a 12-2 run for Charleston Southern. Tough shot, that's going to go down. Nice play by Daniels. A lot of dribbling on that possession, but a good finish. Sometimes the more you hold on to the ball, the defense loads up, you become easy to guard. Jump shot off the mark here by Moore. Nice transition D by Charleston Southern. Five guys back against the ball. Daniels again pounding it, firing it up. That didn't touch anything. And as you said on a previous possession, a whole lot of dribbling. That's going to be a traveling violation. But see that turnover, Dave, dead ball turnover. You get a chance to get back, set your defense, get your matchups call out what you think they're going to run. NC State can still score off of this turnover, but the probability goes way down on a dead ball turnover. Buccaneers with eight turnovers already. NC State with half that many. Allen, the transfer. Thomas Allen sat out last season because of the transfer rule coming from Nebraska. Also had ankle surgery. And they're expecting him to provide, you know, eight to ten a game coming off the bench. Mishandled another turnover off the fingertips of Florence. NC State, quick pick and a steal. That's how they score points from their defense. Wolfpack at home. Despite their two best players being on the bench tonight, the Buccaneers are really playing well. Travis Anderson, Paul, he's a big reason why he has turned it over three times, but he has seven points. And the sophomore from Atlanta, four for five from the free throw line. He's made a three, he's got a two. They're down 17 points in this game without Buskey and Fleming. They're going to have to score by committee, but Travis Anderson off to a hot start for Charleston Southern. Thunderbird. For the bounce here for Daniels. Allen trying to drive it, and he lost the handle on it. He's going to turn it over. And on the drive, a foul as Florence takes the hit. And almost into the standard, but a one-point lead here for the Buccaneers. Well, Kevin Keats can't like that possession at all. The turnover by Thomas Allen. He's just driving the ball into traffic. Then on the other end, defensively, getting back, swatting at the ball, creating a foul. So you miss two, and you give away two. Funderburg with his second personal foul. It's opening night in college basketball from Reynolds Coliseum here in Raleigh, North Carolina. NC State, the Wolfpack taking on Charleston Southern, and they are giving the Wolfpack all they can handle and more. Their packed in defense, Dave, has really hurt NC State. They're not giving a lot of driving lines. They're playing a gap defense. They're really doing a great job. Look at that hedge against the ball screen. They've been tight. They've been in their stance. They've been solid. Sebron will drive and kick. Here's Daniels and hit it and got nailed as well. So a three-pointer. Count that and the foul. That's the life they needed. And this guy's not scared. Great penetration and kick by Sebron. Daniels waiting with his hands, feet ready to shoot it. They lost C.J. Bryce, Markel Johnson last year. That was an experienced backcourt. And Daniels has to pick up the scoring load. Kevin Keats knows that. I still like to see the Wolf Pack pound that ball inside a little bit to Funderburk possibly for touches. 
just to explore what they can get in the paint. 11 of the 18 for the pack so far have been scored by Daniels. NC State up by three. And a very quick answer out on the wing, the three pointer. Or was it two? A two to make this a one point game. Hayes on the drive, trying to take it off the window. He'll draw the foul. Cam Hayes, the freshman. With 10.37 to go here in the first. Cam Hayes, right to the rack, puts it back in his right hand. Kevin Keats needed to replace Markel Johnson. And he did so with a big time recruit in Cam Hayes. I am really high on Hayes. I love his ability to find the open pocket of space. He has a high basketball IQ. He played for Freddie Johnson. We talked about that at Greensboro Day right down the road. This kid could be a star in the ACC. Now looking good at the line. There's 17 fouls for Charleston Southern. Wolfpack and on the ball in the backcourt. Getting that in the offensive zone. Sean Price could be a key man, a junior. Wearing number 23 for the Bucks. Jones losing that when he left it behind. Tried to do a little too much there, the senior. And another turnover. Here's Daniels. Yes, on that on the three. That was an efficient break. Cam Hayes, a couple of dribbles right to the key. He has a great efficiency about himself. Finds the open man. Price trying to make a move, and he's going to turn it over. He carried it. Well, first Daniels with the strip. Hayes with the push. Look the way he's probing the floor. His head is up. His eyes are up. Makes the simple play. Daniels does the rest. Devin Daniels already with 14 points. So he's taken over the offense without question for the Wolfpack. Turn around the paint. That's a sweet shot by Manny Bates to drop into. How about the post feed? Cam Hayes finding his open teammates. Well, you look at Manny Bates, 6'11", the sophomore. Only five points a game last year, Paul. He can do more of this, though. He can contribute on the offensive end. Yeah, James Johnson, the assistant coach from NC State, told me today that Bates has a confidence level right now with his back to the basket. Don't forget, he didn't play his senior year in high school. He was injured. He didn't play his first year at NC State. He's been working in practice, and he has a confidence level that they have not seen before. You can get point paints from Bates inside, and Funderburk face it up. That's a tandem, a tough tandem. Devin Daniels has come out on fire for NC State. The shot fake into the shot. Looking for the three ball. He's tough off the drive. He's a young man who understands this is his time for NC State. Markel Johnson, C.J. Price are gone. Daniels expected to be one of the leading scorers for NC State. At 13 points last year per game, six rebounds. Also an excellent defender. And by the way, to your earlier point, 14 points off of turnovers for the Wolfpack. So capitalizing on all of those giveaways by the Buccaneers. Well, they forced a lot of them. On the baseline price and rejected. Bates getting a hand up, but they're going to win it right back. He will drive it again. No foul. Some contact there, but he got it to go. Very strong move by Sean Price. Took it right to the body of Bates. Bates did a nice job of jumping straight up and not committing a foul. Hayes, not there. No basket. A player down here for the Buccaneers. And grabbing at his... Apparently left ankle, 25-19, NC State with 8.39 to go in the first half. And a player down for Radebon. He can 
he cannot afford anybody else to be out of the lineup tonight after Fleming and Buskey, his two top scorers, were unable to go this evening. Let's take a look at it again. Cam Hayes this time with the jumper. Yeah, it was Travis like Anderson. Travis. Wow. Has to be carried off Paul and uh, heading right for the locker room. A non-contact injury. And Anderson came out, come out of this game hot. I mean, we talked about him out of the break. Mm -hmm. Seven points early, picking up the slack. Without Fleming, without Buskey. The sophomore from Atlanta gives this team almost nine points a game last season. Expected to give up double digits this year. So the Buccaneers already very short-handed and now lose a guy who had a hot hand early in the game. And he had a handle. He helped beat the pressure. <laughs> Charleston mm. Southern must expect the press all game long now. So Knox, the freshman, taken over at that point guard, and they nearly turn it over yet again. Oh. Over the top, but not quite ready for that was Bowser and mishandled it. Here's Hayes. Got a really good look, but could not connect. Two freshmen on the floor for NC State. Cam Hayes, number three. Shaquille Moore, number two. They're going to play that two-headed point guard this season. That's the thing you love about this NC State team. They can play big. They can play small. They can play three guards or three guys in the front court. Yeah, they're a very, very intriguing team in the ACC. The bank shot will go. And you know what? The Buccaneers are not going away despite all the player losses and the massive amounts of turnovers. They're sticking in this game. Well, Charleston Southern is shooting 78% from the field. So if you're That'll Kevin Keach, <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about defense on the next time out. Hayes will back it out, trying to use the screen. The drive and the kick for more. Here's Daniels again. Shot clock a factor down to two. Boy, he was well defended, and he left it short. It barely nicked the iron. Great possession defensively for the Buccaneers. See, they're going to move, pass, cut, and screen and work. That shot clock down and see if NC State makes a mistake. They fall asleep. They're looking for threes or layups. Battle to drive it, a little teardrop, and a foul. They ran that shot clock as you anticipated they would, Paul, all the way down to six before getting a shot in the air. And we've got a timeout with 6.50 to go. Still very much a ball game. NC State at home tonight on top 27 to 21 in the opener. So far tonight, we've seen a lot of turnovers in this game. 12 of them already for Charleston Southern, nine for the Wolfpack. And a couple of key men for the Pack are in foul trouble. Manny Bates just picked up number three, Paul, and Funderburg has a couple. NC State with six steals to go along with their 12 forced turnovers, but foul trouble is putting their shot blocker on the bench in Manny Bates. Charleston yeah, Southern Buccaneers doing a really good job. Alive. Yeah, they're yep. doing a great job hanging around, running their offense, trying to find opportunity. They've been solid on the defensive end. And three feet here, Funderburk. Got that one in. Got it to go somehow, the 6'10 senior from Cleveland. He has five points, 29-23, the Wolfpack. When he first got to NC State Funderburg, he was a dunker, a tip-in guy. Now he's a low post threat and a face-up guy. Boy, that one absolutely buried by Ty Jones. Can really shoot it. He had a 23-point game against Gardner-Webb last February. He was 10 for 13. So he's streaky when he gets it rolling. Allen, he stopped. Back out to Daniels. Helen, soft balance. Charleston Southern on the move. 
Knox not there for him. Buccaneers doing a really good job getting back on defense, blocking out. They're actually winning the game on the glass right now, which is unusual because NC State is so big and so strong. Boy, that's a really strong move by DJ Funderburg and one as he will head to the line. Really took advantage there. Well, Funderburg has been staying after practice, working on his game with James Johnson, assistant coach at NC State. Last year, Johnson had to ask Funderburg to work out after practice. This year, Funderburg seeks out Johnson. I think after that little flirtation, as you mentioned, with the NBA, it opened his eyes of what he can be, and he has worked on his offensive game facing the basket. Seven points so far here in the first half for DJ. It was 76 percent at the line last year, and makes that a three-point play. That's a clean stroke mm. for a 6'10 post. That's a great point. You know, most guys that size, it's pretty ugly. They might get it up there to the rim, but it's not pretty. In his case, it is very pretty. Yeah, just ask Shaq. Yes. A pull up pop and one, and right back come the Buccaneers. That's Florence, the 6'4 freshman, and he has a chance at a three point play. Jaquavion Florence, tough shot on the baseline. Another prospect, another recruit out of the state of Georgia. Good looking freshman. I mentioned that Charleston Southern playing without their top scorer, Flandris Fleming, who averaged about 18 points, nine rebounds, and four assists last year. And oh, by the way, was the Big South Defensive Player of the Year along with all of that. They hope to have him back when they take on the Duke Blue Devils here in the early part of the season. That's a game he certainly doesn't want to miss, did not want to miss tonight. Oh, beautiful move by Funderburg over the shoulder. Talk about Fleming. It's top 10 in the Big South in five different categories. I mean, he impacts winning in a multitude of ways. He's got that senior experience, that leadership. Well, Daniels had been a little bit quiet, you know, for the last four or five minutes after really heating up. We'll see if he gets going again. He's had an outstanding first half with 18. NC State, they look very impressive on the offensive end right now. 58% from the field, 38% from three. They can beat you in size with their size. Excellent defensive team. Another one turned over. Funderburg off balance, can't connect. So one of those times where they fail to turn that into points, well, that's a pretty move on a scoop shot, but it won't drop for Florence. See those turnovers, 14 for Charleston Southern. Now you really want to manage the last three and a half if you're Charleston Southern. If you don't get a shot off, shot clock goes off, that may not be the worst thing in the world, but you must keep NC State on defense as long as you can and still try to get a quality look. Edwards, no. Daniels plucks away to rebound. Wolfpack on the attack. This is where they're pace and pressure start to wear down opponents the last couple of minutes of the first half they can blow this game open in a moment's notice and a foul off the ball or a timeout a timeout here's 36 to 29 nc state with just over three minutes to go here in the first half We'll have a women's college basketball triple header for you Sunday right here on ACC Network at noon Eastern. FSU traveling to rival Florida. And then another in-state rivalry game. This one between Georgia and Georgia Tech. We cap the afternoon with number 22 Notre Dame taking on Miami in South Bend. Great to have you with us tonight at legendary Reynolds Coliseum here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Opening night in college basketball. For Kevin Keats and the Wolfpack taking on Charleston Southern. NC State getting scoring from Daniels with 18. Funderburg with 10 together. 
almost as many as the Buccaneers have as a team. And yet, you know, despite losing really key people, you don't get any more important than your top two scorers. Charleston Southern is staying in the game. They're staying in the game because they're shooting 64% from the field. They're 9 for 14, 75% from three. That number is going to come down. But this number right here, Dave, is impressive. 8 for 12 from the free throw line. They've made more free throws in this game than NC State has attempted. NC State only 5 for 7. Well, apparently a little bit of blood on the floor. And so they're going to take some extra time and make sure that that floor is completely clean in a building that you and I have both been in and both of us know the history of Reynolds Coliseum and all the wonderful things that have happened in there. And it is one of the great places to watch a college basketball game. No question about it. You think about the crowd, the acoustics. If that place was packed for this game, you're looking at 10 or 15 points mm. on NC State side. Yep. I think that holds true for a lot of places in college basketball. I think the best venues, like Duke, NC State, Indiana, they're worth 15 points easy. Well, you talk about great stars at NC State. I mean, anybody who could touch David Thompson, not at that height, and I mean up over the rim. He was only listed at about 6'4", and that might have been debatable, but one of the greatest Skywalkers ever, the only retired jersey in NC State men's basketball history. You and I were talking about him, you know, beforehand. 1974 NCAA champions, an amazing career, number two in Wolfpack history in scoring, but a scintillating player and an absolute pleasure to watch. But, I mean, the original Skywalker, right? One of the best ever in the ACC. You, you mentioned 6'4", with a 40-inch vertical. <laughs> yeah. Now That's his team all. that year, <laughs> in 1974, they went 12-0 and in the ACC. 30-1 and that season. The one loss to that team out west, UCLA. Ellums, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. Boy, coming out of that timeout, 36-29, and look at the look by Kevin Keats. It didn't look like Daniels knew that the shot clock was down. Not sure the communication in the bench for NC State, but that's an assistant coach's role to let the team know what the shot clock situation is. Just remind them. And in this venue with no fans, that should be easy. Yes. Another turnover. That one kicks away right back to the pack. Beverly, yes, and that's what he does. Braxton Beverly with a triple. This guy played his high school basketball at Hargrave Military Academy. Kevin Keats was once the head coach at Military Academy. So you said a couple of minutes ago, look out for the last, you know, two or three minutes because NC State could really run away with it. He's going to be on the baseline. More on the baseline, so it goes right back to the pack here. And the way Kevin Keats has his team coached, they're playing on all four cylinders. They're pushing it. They're looking to score. They're not afraid to take quick shots and transition. Beverly had some back injuries last season, but he is one of their best shooters. And Keats gives his players the green light. And they got to play yeah, hard on defense first, and then they get the offensive green light. He's another one of those guys, Paul, that makes you, you know, really think about NC State as quite an intriguing team. They have a number of different ways to attack you, different kinds of lineups. Won't drop here for Helms. Second effort, Daniels, no. He's kind of gone cold here in the last five or six minutes. The state can explode on you. I mean, they can put runs on you. And they do it mostly with their defense, but I think this team this year is offensive-minded. They have weapons. It's almost like they're so deep. Dave, they have two at every position, if you think about it. Good tight defense there by Cam Hayes. 127 before halftime here in Raleigh. And another turnover forced by the Wolfpack. And a nice give there for Helms. A terrific pass, though, from Devin Daniels. Wolfpack are very comfortable in transition. They feed off their defense. 21 points tonight in the first half. 
off of the Buccaneers turnovers. NC State starting to open it up here right at the end of the first half. This is their biggest lead of the night. Ty Jones gives it up here for more. A lot of iron and no. They have a two for one if they want it. Tough drive. Yes, he made it. And he'll go to the line. And there's Devin Daniels, who's had an outstanding half collectively. I love his aggressiveness. He's comfortable putting it on the deck. Not afraid of contact. But when he's open behind the arc, he's not afraid to shoot it. This young man plays with a aggressive attacking nature. And I think last year he was a little bit in the shadows of C.J. Bryce, Markel Johnson. Yeah, he's got a 20-point game. Wasn't that long ago, this was a three-point contest. Now it's 14. And they're going to get it back for one more. 11-0 run over the last five minutes here for the Wolfpack. Bryce will kick it here, and before the shot, the whistle. 43-29, to 23.7 to go. And they'll talk about this. That's 18 turnovers for Charleston Southern. So far tonight, well, every Saturday morning, the huddle comes your way with Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, and Mark Rick getting you ready for ACC football, previewing the slate of games, keeping you updated on all things ACC football. Coming up on Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern, right here at ACC Network and the ESPN app. Well, Devin Daniels, the scoring star. That could be said many, many times this season when you watch NC State. Chosen eighth in a preseason poll in the ACC. Virginia, the number one pick, pretty overwhelmingly, as Coach Bennett once again has a loaded team. I think when you look at the Wolfpack this season, there won't be that dominant scorer like Markel Johnson who took all the shots. Going to have Thunderberg, Beverly, Allen, and of course Daniels. You could have four guys in double figures most nights for the Wolfpack. It'll be an offensive foul. They're going to get Hayes for that one. Actually, Gibson for that one. With 8.6 to go. Yeah, 6'9 freshman. He was originally committed to Wake Forest. Danny Manning left. Switch this commitment to NC State. On the drive, going to flip that one up there for two. Uh, Sean Price, and that is how the first half comes to an end. Daniels blowing up for 20. Buccaneers with a lot of turnovers hung around for a long time, but NC State had all the momentum going to the break. night for NC State already 10 steals in the game that forced 18 Charleston Southern turnovers in the first half Devin Daniels has 20 points for the pack they're on top 43 to 31. And we welcome you back here to Raleigh. NC State with a 43-31 lead over Charleston Southern as we get the second half underway. Paul Biancardi, Dave O'Brien with you as we come to you from our home locations. We certainly would love to be there in Raleigh as the Buccaneers get the basketball as the second 20 minutes gets underway and a two-shot effort able to drop that one in. Nice effort by Florence on the baseline, so a 10-point lead. NC State, a 20-game winner last season. Question is, would that be good enough to get them into the NCAA tournament? This year, they want to make sure there's no such question when they reach the ACC tournament. And a quick foul here inside the first minute of the second half. If you're Barclay, Radabaugh, you have to be scratching your head. You, you shot 56% from the field, 60% from three, and you're down 12. It's obviously the turnovers, 18 
a 16, I'm sorry, in the first half. So he and told you and I, yeah. yeah, this week he said, you know, we can't turn the ball over 15 times and hope to compete with NC State. He meant for an entire 40 minutes. He didn't mean for a half, and yet they actually hung in there pretty impressively for long stretches until the breakaway by the Wolfpack in the last two or three minutes of that opening half. Beverly to bounce it in. Allen can hit the three, 36% when he was at Nebraska. Daniels again, 20 points in the first half, trying that window, and that's going to go the other way. Yeah, sometimes Daniels has to put on the brakes. When you drive into the paint and there's help defense or shot blockers, you've got to utilize the jump stop. Daniels does a great job of getting low, but he takes off off of one foot. And once there's a help defender, you're in trouble. If you're Kevin Keats, you have to be happy. Three of your seniors, 33 of the 43 points. Uh, quickly cashing in. And Uh, back in Raleigh, NC State forcing a ton of turnovers so far tonight. And they've opened up a 45-33 lead. Here comes the pressure again. Battle lunging, able to hang on to that one, or they would have kicked it away once more. For Charleston Southern, they must get shots off. Their field goal percentage is ridiculous in this game, over 50%. Battle will hammer one in from the corner as he drops in a triple. This is a good shooting team. They execute well. The game plan is right. They just can't give it away with the turnover. Beverly, oh, they left him wide open. He made a pay as he drills a long one. When you look at the you NC State roster, yeah, weapons everywhere, Dave. They sure do. A lot of different ways to score. And they haven't Porter even tied up. fed the post. Kick here for Florence. And he's going to turn it over. He's going to argue the point, but he gives it away. Impressive defense. Devin Daniels. Charleston Southern finding the open corner. Knocking it down. Staying in the game with the three ball, but Braxton Beverly right back at you. How about that little step back and quick release? Those guys who shoot it like that, and you know, he's from Kentucky, and they can all shoot it that way in Kentucky, it feels like, but <laughs> they always know where that line is, don't they? They sure always do. Always know it. where it is. Here's Daniels. He does too as he continues a big night. That's a three. And now NC State, they get into their pressure, not always to get a steal or a turnover, but to force tempo. That time was straight man to man. Look at the pressure in the hands. Another turnover, Allen will lay it in. And they have made them pay over and over and over again for those turnovers tonight, opening up a 53-36 lead. That's the biggest of the ball game. And that's the way Kevin Keats is going to play all season long. It's the way he played when he got the job at NC State. He did it at UNC Wilmington. He's going to press you. He's going to overplay. You're going to see pressure defense in the full court. You're going to see press in the half court, all different types of looks. They want to be active, denying passing lanes. They want to score 17 to 20 points per game by forcing turnovers. Well, tonight it's 28 points already off turnovers for NC State. So that has made a giant difference. Well, Saturday, our college football triple header on ACC Network. Six and three NC State will be in Syracuse to battle the Orange at noon. Then dual threat Malik Cunningham leads Louisville against Boston College. And their quarterback, Jerkovic, and the day is capped off by another dual threat quarterback leading his team, Brennan Armstrong in Virginia. They've gotten really hot. They won three in a row. They take on FSU in our ACC primetime matchup presented by Geico. 12 steals for NC State. DJ Funderburg got in a little foul trouble in the first half. So did Manny Bates. He picked up three fouls. But the Wolfpack has recovered very nicely. Devin Daniels, by the way, with 23 points. And there's Bates on the bench. 
Daniels with 23, his career high is the 25 he got against Duke in that upset win last winter. And we have to remember each team, they haven't played against anybody else. No scrimmages, no closed scrimmages, no exhibition games. It's the first time they've checked into a game yep. in a long, long nope. time. No basket or foul before that. You're absolutely right. And, you know, when you can't scrimmage, it's it's the basic stuff, like you said, about reporting in at the scorer's table that you have to remember to do. I've seen guys go from the bench into the game. That's why you have to <laughs> practice checking in. Yes. Especially yeah, the freshmen. They're on the line again. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you, that, that encompasses so much, right? You can use that line all season, especially freshmen. Yeah, both teams have been 36. a little bit, a little bit rusty at times, but I, I've been impressed with the the effort for sure. You can tell guys have just been dying to play. Execution's been solid by each team. Uh, turned over here by the Wolfpack. Exactly 17 minutes to go in this opening contest for Charleston Southern and NC State. Buccaneers came in 0-8 all time against the Wolfpack. And yeah, without their leading scorer, in fact, their leading two scorers in Fleming and Buskey, that's a really tough task, even losing one of those guys to hang in a game like this. Here's Ty Jones to the lane and picked off. Beverly with another theft and will take a hit. He goes down hard. And let's see if Braxton Beverly is okay. Foul on the play. Beverly with the nice steal. Charleston Southern chasing it down. It looked like Price wanted to block the shot, and then he stopped. Ooh. And Beverly kept going. Mm. And right away, you can see Price tapping his chest, saying, my bad, my fault. Very unintentional. Boy, did he go down from a high place very hard. We'll take a break here. 16.38 to go, 53-36 NC State. They're going to rule this a common foul. If you're Braxton Beverly, there was nothing common about the hit you took. He's a tough kid. I've seen him go down a lot over the years from Hargrave Military Academy to NC State. He always gets back up. And he only knows how to play the game, Dave, one way. He goes hard. He goes strong. Aggressive shooter. Mentally tough. Physically strong. All right, so they did change this to a flagrant. And he will bury those foul shots. So initially we were told a common foul. Obviously that was not the case. And they open up a 55-36 lead. He'll turn and fire and knocks down another one from long range. So he truly made them pay in that sequence. We love the call by Kevin Keats. He puts, Beverly takes the two free throws, then he takes the ball out of bounds, and Keats runs a handoff, back screen handoff for Beverly. Wide open. He has 13 points, 10 of them already in this half for Braxton Beverly. Price getting into the lane. That's tapped away by Beverly. Nice defense there. 16.04 remaining. Watch Braxton Beverly. Takes it out of bounds. Sets a back screen and comes off for a little handoff. Good timing, execution. Play the hot hand. So this is a 13-0 run for the pack. And it's starting to look pretty darn comfortable. You figured eventually the game would get to this as Moore can't find a range, but they'll get it back for a second effort. It really takes a while for a team to get their rhythm, togetherness, uh, team chemistry. It, it, practice, you can only do so much. You have to play games to figure that out. 
Shot clock down to three, and the jump shot won't fall. Rebounded away by Funderburk, who had seven a game last year. Daniels back up top for Cam Hayes. Freshman's played well. Bates in the corner. Pounding that one into the lane. Bank shot won't drop. Back over to the Buccaneers. If you're Kevin Keats, you want to see Manny Bates make that aggressive low post one-on-one -on -one move. Trying to swing it into the lane, and they will turn it over on the Aaron pass. And we have a timeout. Well, that man has really played terrific basketball here in the second half. Braxton Beverly, he's been the main thrust here for the Wolfpack, leading 58 to 36. Women's college basketball triple header Sunday right here in ACC Network at noon. Florida State will be hosting Florida. Georgia, Georgia Tech, and then we capped the afternoon with number 22, Notre Dame. New head coach, Neil Ivey, taking on Miami of Ohio at Purcell Pavilion in South Bend, Indiana. Paul Biancardi, Dave O'Brien with you here as we come to you from our homes in various locations around America. Well, one of, one of Paul's several homes is Palatial Estates. <laughs> and I'm up here in New England, which is his home turf. And that one's going to be knocked down by Devin Daniels, who's had the most spectacular game of anyone here tonight. And he has tied his career high now, 25 points. He really was, I thought, the best offensive player last year down the stretch for NC State. He has looked smooth in this game, and he's looked confident. And, you know, you look at the score now, if you're just tuning in with about 14 minutes to go, it's 60 to 36. But this was a pretty tight game. At one point, it was 32 to 29 with five minutes to go in the half. Since then, it's 28 to 7, NC State. And Daniels is the biggest part of that. Braxton Beverly has joined him with a terrific second half. This is why Manny Bates is a rim protector. Now, I love the block. I like the statement. But he needs to learn how to keep that one in play. Maybe when you go travel to Chapel Hill and Cameron, you want to make a statement. But on that particular play, block it, keep it in bounds, get the fast break. Inside, Shaquille Moore, another freshman out of Greensboro. Will drop in a pair, 62 to 36. And now a very relaxed looking Wolfpack team. And we mentioned early on that Flanders Fleming, the 6'4 senior for the Buccaneers, unable to play in this game. Recently had left knee surgery. Just a cleanup of a frayed meniscus. They do not anticipate that to be a big time lingering thing for him. And the Bucs hope to have their star back when they face the Duke Blue Devils on December 12th at Cameron Indoor. When it comes to injuries, it's better to come back two weeks too late than one day too early. I like the caution here for Fleming. You're going to need him to win the Big South, whether it's the regular season, the conference tournament. Coach Radabaugh knows that's the big picture for the Buccaneers. Again, high hopes for them in the Big South. They were ranked preseason number three in the conference. So expectations are high when they have everybody healthy. And another turnover. Battle hopping around right now in some pain. With 13.40 to play here, and he's going to hobble out of the game. Malik Battle hits some big shots early to keep them right there. Has to skip off the floor. Buccaneers are going to go into their walk-on soon. That's the fourth person to go off. Now a zone. Just to slow things down a little bit, maybe see if NC State will settle. More open. Can't cash in. Big rebound by Bates. Battling inside, wins it back again. People all over him, and he's going to get hit. Or is he going to commit the foul? Oh, they're going to get him. Looked like you an saw elbow. Kevin Keats. Yeah, jumping yeah, off the bench. You couldn't believe it. 
And Manny Bates, terrific activity. Look at that two-handed rebounder within four or five guys. But right there, he turns. Oh, he catches him right on the chin. Now, the question will be, was that player from Charleston Southern in the cylinder, in the space of Manny Bates? He turned vertically with the elbow, which he's allowed to do. He does pick up his fourth personal foul. He got in early trouble. And so number four on Manny. 83 block shots, a school record last year. So he will be a giant factor. Taking a look at this, the swinging of the elbow. But you see Porter now. Does Porter step into Bates' space? I think he does. Yeah. I think that follows on Porter. It looks bad, but Manny turned and his elbows were in a vertical position. They weren't horizontal. And that's going to be the difference, plus Porter taking up the space. And that foul should be on Charleston Southern. Already been one flagrant against Charleston Southern in this game. The officials at the monitor again. Jamie Lucky who always does a great job with his crews. Along with Leslie Jones and Jeremy Mosier. That's the call. Looks like a cylinder call. And Manny clapping his hands. Jamie Lucky, one of the best officials in all of the NCAA, right on top of that call. So in the cylinder, and Porter will pick up the foul. So 13 18 remaining here in Raleigh and a 62 36 advantage for the Wolfpack. Sebron, the freshman, they think he can play the one, the two, the three, or the four. Very versatile. Or in the corner, shot clock a factor now down to four. He'll lift the shot a little too strong. Question will be now, how does Charleston Southern get their points? Corner jumper by Florence, no. NC State right now is playing a freshman at every spot, Paul. And you, as a coach, you had nightmares like this. You have nightmares when you have one freshman on the floor, <laughs> let alone five. But when and they're but, talented, you know, when they're good, that's a different story. When that's you also have a big lead Keith. in the second half. Yeah, yeah it's another And you one, have yeah. a TV timeout coming up, Dave O'Brien. Sure. Everything's going Kevin Keats' way tonight. But it's a great opportunity to continue to develop those freshmen for a long and different type of season. Boy, a different type season, isn't that the truth? With COVID-19 and the havoc it has wreaked in everybody's lives. And you know, both of these coaches were talking about this week, just how thankful they were to just be playing games. And the normalcy of a couple of hours of a college basketball game for these young men and for the schools that they represent, that that is something they're tremendously grateful for. And, and they never want to take for granted, you know, because this is an incredible time in all of our lives. And that was the word that each coach used was grateful. You know, the outcome is important, how they play, but they realize there's a bigger picture involved, the love of the game. And just the mental part of playing somebody else and lacing them up, being on TV, having officials. It can really clear the mind. Even without the fans. In transition and the slam by Sebron. And you mentioned Sebron. They're high on him. He can play a little bit of one. He scores the ball well enough for a two, and he's got good size for a small forward. He's got to be a better defender, though. 
push ahead for NC State. They are pushing the pace. Sebron, no relation to LeBron. Well, the ACC is going to be absolutely fascinating this college basketball season, no question about that. ACC Player of the Year, a lot of votes, of course, for Brooks, but you think there's probably another guy on that list, Paul, that you would give your, your backing to? I'm going to go with Sam Hauser as the Player of the Year in the ACC. I love Garrison Brooks, but to me, Hauser, he had 19 today, efficiently, high IQ, great decision maker. He beats you with his decision making, his skill level, battle tested out of Marquette. In my mind, he's the favorite for the ACC Player of the Year. Well, of course, you're going against the grain. Not the first time you've done that, I realize that. And, and mind you, I live in North Carolina, so that probably wasn't good what I just said, but it's what I <laughs> right. believe. Wolf back with a commanding 64 to 38 lead here at Reynolds tonight. And of course, they'll come conference play, be playing at PNC Palatial, PNC Arena. A beautiful scoop shot there in the lane by Shaquille Moore. They talk about his freakish athletic ability and that he's the best athlete on the squad right now, the freshman. And you saw a little taste of it right there. Yeah, his game is to drive the ball and to defend. And he's the type of guy that Kevin Keats is going to put on the opposing point guard and say, sick him at 94 feet. Shaquille Moore reads the point guard. Look at a little bit of space. Beautiful job of reading the split. And you know, when you say that, you're not talking about putting him on a fellow freshman point guard. You're talking no, about the, the starting point guard. Yeah, whoever that is. Shaquille Moore plays with tremendous confidence and courageousness. Now that's the weak part of his game, the jump shot. Taken right back by Hayes and they get it inside for Sebron. And the cheerleader over there, Devin Daniels, who's had their best game certainly, tying his career high with 25 points tonight. And it balloons to 30, and the turnovers have been massive this evening. Down goes Moore as he gets hit on the drive, and he'll be at the line. In the last five to seven minutes or so, Charleston Southern down three players. It just seems like they, they've lost their confidence. They lost their motor in this game. They played a tough first half. But NC State continues to come at you, whether it's the half court or the full court. And it's that type of pressure that just wears you down mentally and looks like physically for Charleston Southern. Shaquille Moore at the line. And another one coming in a line change here for the Wolfpack. Hurricanes, that's the hockey team down here, Dave, in, in Raleigh. Just so you know, I know you're a Bruins guy, but we have yes. hockey in North Carolina, too. I'm pretty good hockey, you know, at times. I go all the way back to the Bobby Orr days, the big bad Bruins with Esposito and Cheevers and all those guys. Little Kenny Hodge I know you and do Wayne too. Cashman. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and, then the, and the Terry O'Reilly era. Yeah. Terry O'Reilly who didn't take anything off anybody. He was a tough cookie. 10 23 left here. And a 30 point lead for NC State. And Kevin Keats, he, he talked about exactly what you did, you know, as we went to the first half, that he knew there would be some jitters, and because you don't get a chance in COVID 19 to play scrimmages against other teams and you don't have that normal interaction of a regular game until you finally play a game it's just going to be weird for everybody and his team had to shake that off well they did that in style Daniels back in the game his next point he has a new career high a little step back here will barely glance the iron by Helms Jericho Helms a key guy 10 points a game a season ago Rebounded away by Jones and a second effort here for a Charleston Southern. 
The big key for NC State this season will be the point guard position. They're experienced everywhere. Nice move by Edwards. They're experienced in every other position, but the point guard spot is the most important spot on the floor. It's gonna be filled by two freshmen. Now they're talented freshmen. They play hard, but they're gonna to have to learn the, the learning curve, the speed of the game, the physicality, the scouting report defense for NC State to be better than that eighth spot in the preseason poll. Daniels will draw the foul with 9.26 to play here in Raleigh. A couple of those freshmen, Moore and Hayes. And here's Devin Daniels, made 68% last year. And he now has 26 points. So new career high for Devin. But for Hayes and Moore, they don't have to be great. They don't even have to be good. They just need to be steady and solid. And if the freshman couldn't play for whatever reason, you think about this three-guard offense, Thomas Allen, Redshirt junior, Braxton Beverly, senior, Devin Daniel, senior. So you have three guards that could play if the freshmen weren't able to perform in big games. Now they're really going to be a fascinating team to watch in 2021. Very determined drive. It hangs on the iron and rolls away. Nine oh three to play. Wolfpack opening their one hundred and eleventh college basketball season tonight. This is the first time since nineteen ninety eight they're opening the season at Reynolds Coliseum. That was also their last year before moving to PNC Arena. That one fumbled away by Funderburg. And Ke Kevin Keats wants to play his style of basketball. He's done that since day one. I had his game down battle for Atlantis, and they were down. They had six or seven guys his first year, injuries, a lot of problems. I said, how are you going to press for three games in a row with six or seven guys? He looked at me and he said, that's what we do. We press. And so he's never wavered on his style of play. He was an assistant under Rick Pertino at Louisville. And he's committed to playing 10, 11 guys, to playing a fast pace, and to pushing the ball on offense. And this is his best and most talented team in Raleigh. Interesting, you, you know, both head coaches coming into this game as we chatted with them this week, they said that about themselves. Both head coaches said that, that it's their best team coming into 2021 that they've been fortunate enough to have. And, you know, a lot of depth there. In the Buccaneers' case, they were very unlucky tonight because they were not healthy. Jones will bury that one from three-point land to make it 70-43. to 43. Yeah, forget the score of this game. Charleston Southern, top three in the Big South. And every game, they may have the best player on the court in Flandros Fleming. I, I really like Ty Jones, by the way. He's had a chance to perform tonight. 6'6", six, six, senior. You look at his shooting percentages, Dave. 53% from the field, 44 from three, 85 from the line. Number 12 in the blue can really score the ball. Very strong piece for the Buccaneers. Right there at the top of the key. Yep, also a very solid rebounder. Look at that pass. A strong body, yeah, on the baseline. Put me at the point, coach. Put me at the point. Moore finishing that off. And becoming a jump shooting contest here. It's Allen again. Now he's a Raleigh native, originally signed with Mark Gottfried. Of course, he was fired here at NC State, and so Allen took off for Nebraska. But he's coming home, transferring to the Wolfpack, and that's got to be an absolute thrill for him to return home where originally it was supposed to start for him. It's a great story. Great story. And Kevin Keats welcomed him back with open arms. Sure did. And that's a sign of a good head coach recruiter understands relationships. He played his prep basketball 
Allen at Brewster Academy went 33 and 0 in his senior year. Had 50 points in a game one night for Jason Smith, who does a 50, fabulous yeah. job. Yeah, yeah 55. Daniels would follow that one up. Yeah. Speaking of Not big too numbers, shabby. Oh, yeah. 30 turnovers for Charleston Southern. 30. So we, we've said 50 scoring for Thomas Allen and 30 mistakes for Charleston Southern. And look at the points off turnovers. 38 for the Wolfpack. So that is story number one in this game. The defensive pressure and forcing all those mistakes. Slam here by Melvin Edwards. The 6'6 freshman has played well tonight for uh, certain parts of this game. Coaching staff really likes him. They say he's the best athlete on their campus. We've got a timeout. Five and a half to play here in Raleigh. NC State running away with this one, 78-47 on opening night. Every Saturday morning, it's the huddle with Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, and Mark Rick, the coach, getting you ready for ACC football, previewing the slate of games Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Paul B. and Cardi Dave O'Brien with you as we broadcast from our home locales. NC State very much at home here at Reynolds tonight. Getting the ball to Helms to drill that one in. Oh, he'll Jericho. shoot the three and he can make the three. And he can play the big three spot for NC State. So you can play him at the small forward, but I like him at the power forward spot when they play small ball. He can stretch out a defense with that three. Look at the ACC top freshman. Nobody knows this area better than you do. Is Scotty Barnes at FSU at the top? The real deal. Think about Draymond Green when you see Scotty Barnes. Mm. Dayron Sharp, big time rebounder, scoring machine for North Carolina. Had 13 and 9 last I checked. And Duke has Jalen Johnson coming in. Remember that name? Think about Grant Hill with muscles. That's Jalen Johnson. Goodness that gracious. Good. Well, Looking at that list, though, who's the surprise guy on that list? The, the guy that no one's really expecting is going to pop, even though he's a really fine young player. Even though he's a ranked player, P.J. Hall, who's headed to Clemson to play for Brad Brownell. 6'9", low post, high post guy. I love his game. I think Clemson has is, is really struck gold with, with P.J. Hall. Played at Dorman High School won multiple state championships and you don't find 6'9 with skill and size and a little bit of toughness every day. Trying to get in close Bates had some early foul trouble and he's going to draw one right here. Manny Bates 6'11 sophomore out of Fayetteville. This is an area Manny Needs work in seven for 17 at the foul line last season. He's really trying to polish up his low post game and you mentioned his free throw. If state can get points out of Manny Bates you know they're going to get blocks you know they're going to get rebounds. Terrific screen setter. He's got some nice arc on that free throw. Made the pair. Six, yeah, if he can get six or eight points, a couple of low post baskets, a couple of offensive rebounds, you put him next to DJ Funderburk, and you're looking at NC State and North Carolina with the best front courts, I believe, in the ACC. Number nobody six has last best, season yeah. in uh, shot blocking, yeah. yeah no, nobody, I can't think of anybody who have a better front court than North Carolina. Right. Oh, yeah. Amando Baycott and Garrison Brooks and then the freshman Walker Kessler seven footer who can shoot threes and we just mentioned Dayron Sharp. I think it's a pretty safe bet that the Tar Heels will bounce back and find fashion this season as we showed you earlier Virginia is the preseason favorite pretty significantly to win the ACC in front of the Duke Blue Devils. Porter Jr. just fouled out by the way you know I can't help though but think about the season that FSU was having 
before COVID-19 shut down the world and the ACC tournament back in March. And I, I wonder if they're going to be thinking about that. Another basket here, a long three-pointer to open up an 86 to 50 lead for NC State. But I mean, when you're having a special year, and it was it was really feeling like that for the Seminoles. And Leonard Hamilton doesn't strike me as kind of head coach who's going to be looking backward. But boy, when you have a group like that, and you have the momentum that they had. That's got to hurt. That's really got to hurt not to have an NCAA tournament. I know it hurt everybody, but they were certainly one of the favorites, Paul, to go to the Final Four. No question about it in my mind. They had, obviously, they had the defense. They had the talent. They lost two first, uh, two lottery picks in Devin Vassell and Patrick Williams. Florida State was looking at the Final Four. 336 to go in Raleigh, 86 to 50, the pack. ACC football coming your way at noon on Saturday. It's NC State and Syracuse. Louisville and BC will follow. Then the primetime game, Virginia looking for their fourth consecutive win, taking on FSU at 8 p.m. All coming up on the ACC Network on Saturday, a very full day of college football. NC State pouring it on in basketball in their season opener. Price, nice move down the lane. Sean Price with a tough game. The junior missed all the last season, just about all of it with a back injury, but will be a very important performer for the Buccaneers. And a reach and a foul with 3.15 to go. Dave, we were talking about NC State in that eighth spot preseason poll. You take a look at the teams. Virginia definitely at the top. Duke, Florida State, and I think North Carolina will be the most improved team, not only in the ACC, but maybe nationally. Uh, they supplied themselves with more size, great shooters, and they couldn't shoot the ball last year that well. They got R.J. Davis and Cam Johnson. Younger brother, Puff Johnson is his name. Really good outside shooters, size, point guard, and Caleb Love. Miami strong with a lot of guards coming back including Chris likes but I see NC State as that that fifth or possibly that fourth spot this year I think this is the year for Kevin Keats at NC State he has a lot to work with I know he has a young unproven point guard in Cam Hayes but he's talented and Shaquille Moore helps him out well they have forced just an absolute ton of turnovers here in the season opener a little stumble there by Jones who will take the foul. 2.57 on the clock. So, I mean, you can look at that as as maybe an underrated situation for the Wolfpack, right? In that in that eight spot, you talk about sleepers, you talk about a team that can jump up to the next level. That's the Wolfpack. I, I think it's NC State, and when you look at that preseason poll, Georgia Tech comes to mind. Jose Alvarado, who's as tough as they come at the point guard spot for Georgia Tech. Mike DeVoe, at the shooting guard spot. I like Georgia Tech and I like NC State a little bit more than the polls. Yeah, I agree with you about Alvarado. You and I were chatting about him before the game as we were going through, you know, lists of outstanding players who we're going to talk about tonight as we kick off the season. And he's just an absolute fun dude to watch. And he can light up the scoreboard. He can be a one man wrecking ball. I watched him play at Christ the King High School. He played for a tremendous high school coach by the name of Joe Abatella. I mean, Jose Alvarado, he would not let his team lose. And when he does, I mean, he takes it to heart. He's that type of kid. Great leader. E.B. Dewana, 6'11 freshman from Ghana. They call him a mini Manny Bates. Well, at 6'11, it's hard to call anybody mini. But he goes by E.B. Ebenezer is his actual first name, but nobody calls him that even at Christmas time. <laughs> E.B. Dewana with a nifty hoop there, 89-54 NC State. And, and getting shows everybody you, into the fray. Yeah, it shows you the depth of NC State. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a 6'11", 235-pound freshman. Jalon Gibson also played a little bit in the first half. 6'9", 210-pound freshman. So Kevin Keats has some backups 
They're not backup players, but they can back up Thunderbird and Bates in foul trouble. So, I mean, ideally, when you're talking about Coach Keats, how deep does he want to go? When you get into ACC play, which will be soon enough, into conference play, guys tend to tighten up their rotation, you know, as these games become more and more important. But uh, is he still going to go 10, maybe 11 deep? I, I think he's going to strive for 10. And as you mentioned, as the season comes to an end, coaches like to tighten up their rotation. But part of the philosophy by Kevin Keats is to wear people down. And when you do that, you're going to get in foul trouble yourself. Uh, you need to play at least nine or 10 guys if you're going to play that style of basketball where it's nonstop uh, pressing, pushing, and uh, taking some shots quickly in the offense that are open. Uh, they're looking to attack. They're, they're not worried about, they're not, they're not forgiving mistakes. You know, they're not worried about making mistakes. They're, they're playing as fast as they can. And defensively, they are trying to score points from their defense like they have tonight. Boy, have they ever, with all of these points off turnovers, I mean, that's got to be approaching a school record. And where they're going to be different this year, NC State, James Johnson, the assistant coach, who was the former head coach at Virginia Tech, told me, we want to be one of the best rebounding teams in the country this year. On the slam, Shaquille Moore. Yeah, they've been raving about his athleticism. Little hand there from Manny Bates. And you could shut the lights off, and Shaquille Moore would continue to play in this game. A lot of guys would say, hey, the lights are off. we got to stop. Not Shaquille Moore. He doesn't know how to stop. That's what makes him great. Price will draw the foul. So NC State about to go to 21-2 and two at Reynolds since 1999. They enjoy life in this legendary building very, very much. As Price misfires on the first one. And Sebron back on. Darion Sebron, a freshman from Greensboro. So just about a minute to go here and a 91 57 lead for the Wolfpack. Okay, Kevin Keats, you feel great, not just about the score, but the way your team played for 40 minutes. Yes, mistakes were made, but the intensity level was strong all game long. Their ability to force turnovers was very good. And, and, and Coach Keats got a chance to see different guys, different lineups. What did it look like with three guards? What did it look like with a big unit? Understanding that Manny Bates and Funderburk will get in foul trouble as well. That certainly happened with Manny early on. Yep. Hard to remember. This was actually a three-point game with about five to go in the, in the first half. And that's when the Wolfpack said, well, enough of this. And, and, and that started score, to break away. Yeah, and they didn't have their superstar in Fleming. They didn't have Buskey. And Travis Anderson went out during the game. And Coach Radaba may not be getting a milkshake as he does after wins on the road. But I'll tell That's you right. what, he has a terrific team, and they're going to challenge in the Big South. They're going to challenge Winthrop. And, and keep an eye on Asheville as well. They're, they're going to be strong this year. Final seconds here in Raleigh. Wolfpack will cruise to a victory here tonight on opening night. Gibson coming off that bench, and he's got him dancing. They like six, the effort. Six feet apart, but they're dancing. Yeah, they are. Yeah, <laughs> social distance. Social dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Following the protocols right down to the wire here this evening in Raleigh, North Carolina. So the Wolfpack will win. Here on opening night by a final score of 95 to 61. A victory goes to Coach Keats and NC State over the Buccaneers of Charleston Southern. For Paul Biancardi, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight for ACC basketball. Now Daniels had an outstanding first half. He had a career night, in fact. And the Wolfpack able to rock and roll to an impressive victory. They are one and oh thanks for joining us have a great night everybody
and happy Thanksgiving.